The thing about tattoos. It can be an art form. It can be anything you want it to be. It's like such a personal thing. Over the years, Vivine Lozanga has learned there are stories behind every one of them. It tells the person's intimate, personal story. And so we begin this story here with one of Vivine's clients. So much creativity. Kim Lavarello. You'll learn Kim and her twin sister Stephanie There was no doubt. made a decision that changed their lives. Removing anything that will cause fear. To me, what's so remarkable about the story that you're telling for, for Kim and for Steph is that they've saved lives, they've saved the quality of their lives. I love life. I love the fact that I'm still here. What's not to love when you've been handed a gift, a second chance at life for this Seattle artist? I like to paint things that are very surreal, also based on personal experience. And her twin, who owns a boutique in Fremont. Spend just five minutes with the twins. Kim's tattoo? I've um, always been a little bit over the top. Yeah. So what could have been it, just You'll notice little... they finish each other's... Go ahead. Has, so it started... Sentences. With, you've always been into tattoos. Spend more time. I mean everything. It's like she moved to California and then I moved to California. You'll learn nothing happens to one of them. Yes, that's true. Everything Steph gets, I get. Yes. That doesn't happen to the other. She got a Russian boyfriend, I got a Russian boyfriend. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, I move here, she moves here. Here we are in Seattle. She gets sick, I get sick. Little clicks of radiation. Cancer. Not something I wanted. Stephanie gets breast cancer in 2005. I did a bunch of paintings during my chemo treatments. Kim gets breast cancer a year later. I didn't want anyone to see me. I was very insecure. The sisters want to know why them. The wig that she wore, I ended up wearing the same one. Is it something in their genes? And they learn. All in the family. Yep. It is. In a weird way, I was like, oh, okay, well, that explains it. The twins test positive for a genetic mutation that increases the risk for breast cancer for those who have it. That explains why I got cancer at 35. The woman who discovered this gene is Mary Claire King, and she lives here. Now, I have to confess, I've never met anyone who's discovered a gene. All genes have their stories, and BRCA1 is my story. That discovery by Dr. King in 1990 leads to screenings for women with the potentially deadly mutations. I would like to believe that there are many women alive now as a result of this work who would not be alive otherwise. And those screenings save lives. Women can take action if they learn they have mutations in this gene. Yeah, this is pretty scary. It made me think a lot about how fortunate I was. When you think of cancer, you think of death. To have the ability to make decisions to save my life. The twins' decision to get double mastectomies and hysterectomies come down to one thing. To remove what was going to kill me. So I like the idea that I can do something beautiful for them. A work of art rather than just trying to cover up the scar. Kim decided to get a tattoo, then Stephanie. I'm covering something and it's going to be beautiful. I, and you cannot see the scars either. The scars from all the reconstructive surgery. Yeah. I love her tattoo. It was more painful getting that tattoo than any surgery I ever had. This photo shoot is to celebrate their new look. Yes, live life, share my story. And the best news of all. Cancer free. I am, yes, yeah. Perfect, love that. Both of them. Uh, twins. End of story. I tell the story, people just get goosebumps when they hear it because it's just so surreal. Who are these next to her, I wonder? Not even mm -hmm. close. Yes. And who's this? You need to let people know about this. The twins need to tell family yeah. members right away so it's they can funny. get tested too it. for this gene mutation that could kill them. One problem. We were adopted in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The twins have no idea who their biological mother is. Did she have what I now have? Is she still alive? All these questions. Who else might have this gene? They know nothing about their biological family, and the records are sealed. And as the clock keeps ticking, they keep thinking. They should be able to get tested for the gene. So we want to identify those people who are at risk. That's when a genetic counselor from Swedish Hospital saves the day with a letter. I said to the judge that this information is critical for the medical care of her biological family. So please open up the records. Exactly. 
both of us assumed it would take months. A week later, they get a letter that changes their lives and may help save others. Finally, we were going to find out. Dear Kimberly, I'm sorry to let you know, but your mother, Barbara Jajo, died in 2003. So you never got to meet your mother? No. The letter goes on to say their mother had another daughter. Her name is Laura. Laura. Mm -hmm. It's very surreal. I believe it was Steph that called me. Yes, pretty intense. It was a little surreal. Um, I, I, I said hello, you know, she says, hey, my name is Steph. Uh, I am your natural half-sister. The twins had no idea where their half-sister and mother lived. They figured it was far away. After all, they had been given up for adoption in Florida. They were raised in New Hampshire. Eventually, they headed west to California before ending up here in Washington State. So imagine their surprise when they learned the following. I'm like, oh my God, she's, she died in Enumclaw. How is that possible? Yes, Enumclaw. 45 minutes from where we were living. I mean, I could have passed her on the street. Here's our birth mother at our age. And the twins discover how their mother died. Oh my God, how did she die? Uh, metastatic breast cancer. Breast cancer. Yeah. Stephanie discovers her mother received radiation here. Just gives me goosebumps. In the same hospital, in the same room, Stephanie was treated. In a sense, she was walking the halls just like you were mm, walking Probably the halls. sitting in the same waiting room. All here together at the same time. Didn't know about the other, right? Steph and I as babies. And now half-sister Laura Jajo <laughs> knows what she needs to know. Yep. No cancer yet. As for the potentially deadly gene mutation. And I got tested and found out that I was also positive. Oh my God. Isn't that weird? Now Laura will have to consider her options. She's already thinking ahead. The tattoos covering up, you know, memories, scars with a beautiful piece of artwork. If I have to go through that, I'm doing it too. You're helping her save her life. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. My own view is that knowledge is power. There you go. The power is knowing if you're at risk, knowing you need to answer the question, what should I do now? I think this, a story like this will save lives. What a story, huh? I know. I, I, it's my story and I don't believe it. <laughs> John Sharifi, King 5 News. Their story is something else. Laura J. Joe's life hasn't been the same. I find myself actually saying that sometimes. Ever since that phone call. Yeah, it was good news first. The good news, bad news phone call. She told me that um, she was my sister. Yes. Stephanie was on the other end of the line telling Laura <laughs> that she had not one but two sisters. Mm -hmm. To this day, I can't believe it. Twins. That was the most mind-blowing part. They had the same mom. Barbara Jajo. Who had died of cancer. Well, our mom was in that apartment. 45 minutes from where we were living. That's where we lived. How is that possible? It's still two bedroom, one bathroom. No. Laura was raised by her mom. The twins were not. We never met her. And we were adopted in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A few years before Laura was born. You grew up not knowing about your sisters, right? Nope. It was a secret Laura's mom would take to her grave. So you never got to meet your mother? No, but mom was there taking pictures. They had each other now. I know. It was mind blowing. I, I you know, it was exciting at the same time. That was the yeah. good news part of the call. <laughs> I loved it. I love to tell this story to people because they are just uh, in total shock every time. And, the, and then what happened? We're Bilateral, right, right and left. The bad news part? That was also stressful. It's why Laura is heading to the operating room at Swedish Medical Center right now. When she got diagnosed with the gene, that was like, oh gosh. The gene mutation, BRCA1, a mutation that significantly increases the chances of cancer. It's what led to Stephanie getting breast cancer in 2005, Kim getting breast cancer a year later. I, I mean, it was hard. I was upset and I cried. Laura knew nothing about it. Oh, no, I thought I was an only child till 2007. How could she know? The twins had double mastectomies and later tattoos to cover the scars. And as soon as we found out we had a half-sister, that's all we kept thinking about is we have to talk to her. And that Laura would be getting a call from them one day after the twins' desperate search 
to find their biological family. We wanted to know if there was anyone else in our family. If there was, they need to know about this. To save uh, their lives. To save their lives. It's a scary thing. And the gene test came back positive and it was like instantly, it was like, no question, I gotta do this. Big problem though. But you didn't have health insurance. No, I was very um, clueless about the cost. She couldn't afford the prophylactic surgeries her twin sisters received the double mastectomies and the reconstructive surgery. Swedish Medical Center. Can't believe I did the, the, the cry on TV. They're like, oh my God. To the rescue. I have some good news. What's that? The folks at Swedish Hospital saw your story and they are going to cover the costs. Really? Well, I'm going to cry. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so I've always told myself I'm not a lucky person. I've never won anything in my life, and I think my luck just changed. Yeah, luck. Thank and you. two determined sisters on a life-saving search. One thing led to the other, then to the other, and here we are. It's very A life's been saved. Five hours of surgery, two doctors. The goal is to remove all the breast tissue. And a shared hope. There'll be no fear. Exactly. Laura will have both breasts removed in a double mastectomy performed by breast surgeon Dr. Patricia Dawson. The worries are gone. The reconstruction is in the hands of plastic surgeon Dr. Wandra Miles. She's got such good doctors and it's very lucky, very fortunate. She places an implanted tissue expander. It's like a deflated balloon behind the muscle. It's bringing back a lot of memories too. Me waiting for her, her waiting for me. There's always the unknown. The surgery is going well. Um, Miles is finishing the other side, so another hour. You could say it all started with that phone call. You feel really good about it because she's doing the right thing. From the twin sisters, Laura never knew she had. Hey, Laura. And when you think about it. So how you doing? It wasn't a good yeah. news, bad news phone call after all. They said everything went well. Did they? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All good, because today Laura J. Jo received life-saving surgery. Everything went great. And all paid for. You can't beat that. Right. John Sharifi, King yes. 5 News. That's it. That's the happy ending.